My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to today's presentation. Today is part three of From Heaven to Earth. The topic is divinely venerated. Divinely venerated. Part three of From Heaven to Earth, or who is she? Part three. And like I said in the last two weeks, the last two teachings, these are teachings that need a lot of sobriety. It needs a lot of openness in our hearts to accept the word of God the way it is, to listen, design, and take it as it is. Today I'm talking about divinely venerated. And like I said, I've taught so much about the Blessed Virgin Mary in my books and especially No Reason for Division. Some of these topics that I've covered, I've taught them there in depth with many biblical verses and many other topics that I may not be able to cover them at this point in time. For today is the last of this series for this time. We'll talk about her later in other areas because there are so many areas that have been misrepresented out there that I would wish by the grace of God we cover them during our weekly presentations. My name is Stephen Mbugua Doidi from the Archdiocese of Mombasa, Kenya. Venerate, the word venerate means great honor, great honor, very much respect a person. So normally in the chart, we normally venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary, giving her the greatest honor, but not adoring. There is a difference, not adoration. Adoration and reverence is reserved to God only. We don't adore her because she's not God, but we give her the greatest honor. And today, I'm teaching that this honor has not only come from the human point of view, but it's also divinely given. Let us see from the Word of God. Last week and the previous week, we really talked about Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. We discovered who the woman is, that the Lord is saying, I'll put great, great enmity between the devil and the woman. Great enmity. That we saw that enmity remain even up to revelation. She never committed sin by the grace of God. Spiritual death, sin is spiritual death. And this is what she was protected because the moment you sin, you are no longer an enemy of Satan, but a friend of Satan. But she was protected from this sin for the greater glory of the kingdom of God. Today I want to look at Luke chapter 1, verses 41 to 44, as we continue. Luke chapter 1, verses 41 to 44. The word of God says, When Elizabeth had Mary's greeting, the infant lived in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to remember these words. The Blessed Virgin Mary has been filled by the power of the Holy Spirit to conceive. She was already full of grace. But now she has conceived Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. She has gone to visit Elizabeth. And the moment she arrived, the Bible tells us, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women. Most blessed are you among women. Of all women in the world, ever to be and ever will be, most blessed. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. These are words of Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit and are the words that we normally use in the prayer that we talk about, the Hail Mary prayer. It is the same one. It's a biblical prayer. When you're praying this prayer, you're actually reciting the word of God. It is all in the Bible. Most blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Elizabeth is asking. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ear, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Amazing. The Blessed Virgin Mary has gone to visit Elizabeth. And the moment she arrives carrying Jesus in the womb, power fills Elizabeth, even the baby in the womb, is filled with the Holy Spirit. They start kicking inside. 
And Elizabeth is saying by the power of the Holy Spirit that this lady, this woman, she's blessed among all women by divine design. And immediately Mary starts singing a song of joy, thanking God, the Magnificat. And she says, for he, verse 48, Luke 1, 48, for he, God, has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. From now on will all generations call me blessed. Again, this is by divine design. When Mary is saying these words, and it is in the word of God, she is not only filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, she is not only full of grace, but she's actually carrying the Messiah physically in her womb. She is carrying God in her womb, filled with the Holy Spirit, already full of grace, speaking this word that all generations from this point on will call her blessed. I want to remind you, my listener, that the blessedness of the Blessed Virgin Mary is not human-made. It is by divine design. Just like for God, whether we call him God or not, he remains God. He does not change. Because his being God is not human-made. So it doesn't matter whether a human being calls him God or not. He remains God. He doesn't change anything. And the blessedness of the Virgin Mary is also divine. Whether you and I call her blessed or not, she remains blessed. Every generation that has ever been, that will ever be, she remains blessed by divine design. Divinely venerated. So even when you are praying, asking her to pray for us, God has lifted her to a level that no other human being is or has ever been. And will never be. Remember I said Jesus is God. I'm talking about human beings pure. God has lifted her amazingly. And remember, when we are praying, asking Mother Mary to pray for us, there is a difference between praying to her as God and asking her for prayers to pray for us. There's a big difference. Just like you come to me, just like you go to a priest, just like you go to a pastor or anybody else, and you tell them, pray for me, it's the same. We don't come to you because you're God. But we know that prayer, we help each other in prayer. And so when we are asking her to pray for us, we are not praying to her as God, but asking her to intercede for us, just like we come to you, come to me for prayers. It is the same. There is no difference. I have really tackled at uh, this point, like I said, and even this prayer of Hail Mary, I have tackled it bit by bit in the book, No Reason for Division, giving biblical quotation for each stanza, each area of the prayer, giving biblical support. Because many people have mis misunderstood the prayer and the intent and the direction of the church. But let me just look at it very briefly, just mention it as I pass through. Who said Hail Mary? It is the angel, Gabriel, sent by God. Remember, he's a messenger. He's not taking his own message, but the message of God. So it is actually God saying to this woman, the messenger is only speaking the words. Hail Mary, you are full of grace. All that is biblical. It is the angel speaking these powerful words to this virgin, telling her, Hail Mary, you are full of grace, and the Lord is with you. That is the first major portion of the prayer. The three areas all by the angel. Then Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, continues with the prayer. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. We have read. It's all there in Luke chapter 1. All these are, they are the words of the angel and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. I know here again people have issues, but when you go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 onwards, the Bible says, A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. We know who this child is. He will be our ruler. 
he will be called wonderful counselor we know who this child is and we know who the mother is so the wonderful counselor the mother is the blessed virgin mary so she's the mother of the wonderful counselor i continue to read verse 6 mighty god so the child she's giving birth to is the mighty god so she's the mother of the mighty god eternal father Jesus is equal to the Father. So she's the mother of the eternal Father, Prince of Peace. She's the mother of the Prince of Peace. So these are not things that people are making up for themselves. This is actually very, very biblical. The Blessed Virgin Mary was highly venerated by God himself. So the only part in the prayer of Hail Mary that the church has added is where, they, where we say, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. That is the only part. The rest of the prayer is all biblical. Now the question is, why ask her to pray for us? Is it necessary? And are the prayers of the saint acceptable? And if the prayers of the saint are acceptable, then her prayers are more than acceptable. I normally say that if the Blessed Virgin Mary is not in heaven, then heaven is empty. Because if the one who's full of grace did not make it, then who made it? If the one who's actually carrying the Messiah in her home did not make it, then who made it? So let's look at Revelation chapter 7, verse chapter 5 sorry revelation chapter 5 verse 7 and 8 the word of god says this revelation 5 7 and 8 the lamb went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who sits on the throne as he did so the lamb is there as he did so the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each had a half and gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. The four living creatures are in front of God, before the seat of glory. They are there with incense, and they are being told, these are our prayers, the people of God, that they are presenting before God. If these elders are there together with the, with the four living creatures, presenting our prayers to God, so truly prayers are presented, our prayers, the ones who are living on earth. If you go to Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, Revelation 6, 9 to 11, Then the Lamb broke open the fifth seal. I saw underneath in heaven, I saw underneath the altar, the souls of those who had been killed because they had proclaimed God's word and had been faithful in their witnessing. These are the souls of martyrs. They were killed for proclaiming the word of God. They are in heaven before the Lord. They are there. What are they doing? Interesting. Verse 10 says, They shouted in a loud voice. These souls are speaking and they are in heaven. And they are shouting. They are talking to God. What are they saying? Almighty Lord, holy and true. How long will it be until you judge? the people on earth and punish them for killing us. They are actually putting their case on issues happening on earth right now. They are there speaking about things on earth. If they are able to communicate with God and even talk about things here, even call for our own punishment, the ones who kill them, that means in heaven there is communication between the saints and the living one. The great I am. Verse 11 says, each of them was given a white robe. They are saints, they are martyrs. They are given a white robe. And they were told, they are speaking with God. There is communication in heaven between the saints and God. And that's why we normally ask them to pray for us. They are before the seat of throne. What is God telling them? They were, they were given each a white robe and they were told to rest a little while longer. Until the complete number of their fellow servants and fellow Christians had been killed as they had been. There are more martyrs to come. There are more people who are going to shed blood for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom of life. And when they die as martyrs and say they are before the king of, 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 of glory, they are there pleading for the case of the ones who are living. That is why we normally invoke the prayers of the saints. And I repeat, if martyrs can plead their case, 
If saints can be before God and plead their case, if the angels are presenting our prayers, how much more? The mother of the almighty God, the one who was divinely chosen, divinely venerated to carry the Messiah here on earth. The one who's full of grace. I remember one day, I met a group of pastor friends of mine. I had met them through one pastor lady who had read my first book, Solace in Sorrow. After reading my book, she came for a presentation, a talk I was giving. And after that, she requested if I could go and share with them my testimony. And when I went, after prayers, and I really talked to God and I had the go-ahead, when I went to talk to the group of pastors, men and women, about 20 in number, I remember after my testimony, I've really shared this in No Reason for Division, it's there in details. After my testimony, they started throwing questions. That was not part of the plan, but I was prepared. They started throwing questions. The first one was, what is this thing that you're putting on your neck? Isn't this another God? They started firing me for my faith. And like I said, I'm not here to convince you otherwise. I'm only here to share the word of God, the truth of the word of God. The decision is yours purely. My work is not to convert. My work is to preach the word of God. God does the rest. They say, this is another God. They say so many things, so many why, why, why do you do that? And eventually they talked about the Blessed Virgin Mary. They say, why do you go to that woman? Why do you pray to her like you're God? And I started correcting them. But before I corrected them, I requested one of the most vocal ones. I requested him to read 1 John chapter 3, verse 15 from his Bible. Because I knew if I read my Bible, it's going to say it's Catholic. So I requested him to read from his Bible. And he opened his Bible confidently. 1 John 3, 15. He cleared his voice. <coughs> then he started reading. All who hate others are murder. He did not finish. It is the word of God. I said, Pass, continue reading. It is the word of God. The Bible is so clear. All who hate others are murderers. And he continued to say that you know that murderers do not have eternal life in them. And I remember putting it clearly to them. If you don't change your attitude, if you continue with this hatred and abuses, then you're actually headed to hell. After asking them, do you hate Catholics? Some of them actually nodded their heads. And it's interesting that the devil is dividing us and fighting a left, right, and center to actually hate each other. Yet we are saying we are all Christians. Amazing. Crazy stuff. But then I started explaining about the Blessed Virgin Mary, especially the question of why do we go to her to pray? And I told them, we don't pray to her as God. She's not God. We ask her to pray for us. And they asked me, why should you go to her? Why don't you go directly to God? And I told them, okay, I've got no problem with that, but I want to ask you for a favor. When your Christians come to you, and they come to you to pray for them from today, also tell them not to come to you, tell them to go direct because they can also go direct. And they were shocked by that word. Because we pray for others, we want them to come to us. But the ones who have lived well, who are actually in heaven, we don't want to ask for their prayers. Yet it is very biblical. I remember taking a glass, a, a, a bottle of water, a bottle of water. It was full. And then I started explaining what it means to be full of grace. I explained that none of us who are there was full of grace. I actually pointed to a number of them, including myself. And I said, maybe I'm 20% full of grace. Maybe you're listening to me, you're only 15. Maybe another one is better off than us, it's 30%. But none of us is full of grace. So when I took the bottle of water, I said, this bottle of water is full, completely to the brim. I asked them, can anything enter here? They said nothing, not even air. Because it is full, unless you remove a little bit, that's when something can go in. But if you don't remove anything from the water, some content, nothing can go in. And this is what fullness of grace means. I explained about grace a few days ago, weeks ago. And I said, grace means undeserved favor. When you have a little favor, grace, you are able to defeat a few sins. When you have more grace, you defeat bigger sins. When you are full of grace, there is no space even for air. There's no space for sin to enter. And that is why she was filled with grace to be protected 
from sin. Now she's full of grace. I am not. You are not. The question that I asked my brothers and sisters then, and I want to ask you, my listener, today. If you are given an option to be prayed for by somebody like me who's 20% full of grace, for example, or maybe you are 25% full of grace, or one who's 100% full of grace, who would you choose? Interestingly, on that day, my fellow brothers and sisters, they chose 100, and I told them openly, that is the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is full of grace by divine design. She has been divinely venerated. All generations will call her blessed. It is the word of God. And I remember after sharing for some time, some of them were actually confused as to why they left the church. Because some of them left because of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We don't pray to her as God. But God has lifted her. You know, I've shared many a time saying that even today, if you have to give me an air ticket to go to Rome free of charge, go have a holiday, meet Pope Francis, and he prays for me. And the second option is I remain here and the Blessed Virgin Mary prays for me. If I'm given the two clear options, I would remain here, have her prayers, because she's full of grace. No other human being, no anointed man or woman of God is full of grace. Nobody's close to that. So for me, after understanding the word of God as is, I would choose her anytime. Because she is full of grace. And remember the prayer that we normally pray every day. It is in the Bible. Hail Mary the angel. You are full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, Elizabeth. And blessed is the fruit of the home, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, is in the Bible. We've seen. Isaiah chapter 9. We've seen. Pray for us. Seen us now in the hour of our death. Just like you pray for me. Just like I pray for you. Just like as you are finishing today, we will be praying for each other. That is what he asked from her. Because God has divinely venerated her. Who am I? Who are you? I want to finish today's teaching by giving an analogy that I've shared in my book, No Reason for Division. Today is the last series of Who Is She? Divinely venerated as we move to another level next week. But really, my sharing is to enlighten us because there's so much lies about the Blessed Virgin Mary out there. There are so many abuses that are uncalled for. Really, God lifted her, venerated her. Who are we to abuse the choice of God and the mother of God, who God chose to come through into the world? Who are we? Really, I've been saying the last two weeks, and if you have, continue asking God to forgive you because what you've been doing is not right. It's because of receiving humanly crafted gospel. That's why you even have the guts to abuse her. I've, I've shared a story of two friends, secondary school friends, very close, and they had agreed that nothing will ever separate them. They were male, both of them. They are friends and they say nothing will ever come in between their friendship. But one of them was a Catholic, the other one was a Protestant. But every time the Catholic would get out her rosary to pray, and I've talked about the rosary in my book, and I've shared bit by bit, explaining where it comes from in the Bible, bit by bit. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this tool. Read it in no reason for division. God allowing, we'll have time that we are going to, to go through it bit by bit. Absolutely nothing. It's just a prayer item, a sacramental. By the power given to the church by Jesus, what they bless you on earth is blessing heaven. But it is there in black and white. I've really shared these things. So whenever this man would actually move his rosary to pray, the other one who is not a Catholic, would actually be angry with him. And for some reason, that is the only thing that was actually making their friendship have some issues. And the Catholic would be hurt every time he's abused about the mother. And one day he told the friend, because the friend apparently would talk about so much about his own mother, how wonderful the mother is, and how he would like his friend to go and meet his mother. 
and they agreed one day that they are going to visit their mother. So the Catholic told the non-Catholic, you go ahead, prepare for my coming. And the gentleman went home. He told his mom, my best friend is coming tomorrow. And the mom was cooking the best meal, preparing for the best friend to come the following day. And this young man had already found out the things that the friend's mother liked. He went shopping. He wrapped the gifts powerfully, very, very well. And the following day, he took his car, drove all the way. He went and parked at a distance. And the young man, his friend, saw him. And he called his mother. He said, Mother, my best friend is coming. The mom was in apron. She was cooking. It was a buffet lunch. Everything was ready. So she really took off the, the apron and ran out to go and meet the son's best friend. When she went close to the gentleman, she wanted to give him a big hug, but he was carrying stuff on his hands. The goodies, the shopping that he had done. So she quickly looked and saw some of the things that she loves. And she said, is this mine? Yes. She took the parcel, ran back home to her bedroom, locked them in, came back to hug the friend of the son. And when she came to hug him, the young man folded his hands and he turned away. And the mother was angry, said, what's going on here? Said, hey, I'm saying hi to you. The young man turned away, became aloof, not talking. The friend came and tapped his shoulder. Hey, my mom is talking to you. Say, he didn't say anything. He just looked aside. The mother was angry. She said, how can you come to show me, humiliate me in my own home? She said, I'm going to get a weapon. Get out of my home. She ran to the house. And this friend told the Catholic friend, please get out of our home. And he got into his car. He drove away before the mom came back with a weapon. They did not talk for about two weeks. They did not talk. And one day the Catholic said to call his friend. When he called, he put off the phone, switched off. He called again after some time. The guy switched him off. He called a third time. He decided to pick and ask him, what do you want with me? After what you did with my mother. He said, I'm calling you because we are friends. He said, no, we can no longer be friends. He said, why? We agreed nobody's ever going to come in between our friendship. That's what you agreed, not even your mother. He said, no way. You cannot humiliate my mother and abuse her and remain being friends. And he said, by the way, I never abused your mother. I only kept quiet and folded my hands. The guy said, that was too much. And he got a chance to ask him, if it is too much for you to humiliate your mother a little, with no abuses, once, and for that reason, you are calling off our friendship. How do you think your master, your messiah, who you claim to have a personal powerful relationship with, who you claim is your savior, and you abuse the mother every day, how do you think he feels? And do you think your friendship with him is still there after abusing the mother that you abuse him? That is when he got back to his senses. And he realized that his so-called personal powerful relationship with Jesus could be messed by abusing the mother. Of all people, we are actually not even allowed to abuse our own brothers and sisters. God said, don't call anybody a fool. Yet he abused not just any other human being, but the mother. Today, once again, as I finish this series, if you have ever abused her, the choice of God, divinely venerated, all generations will call her blessed. And instead of calling her blessed, you're abusing her because you've been indoctrinated by human ideologies. Ask God to forgive you. Seek the blood of Jesus to cleanse you and invite the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you to the whole truth. She is divinely venerated. She was divinely chosen and prepared, protected from all sin, enmity with the devil, the great enmity that we saw from Genesis up to Revelation. By the grace of God, never committed sin. And here we are abusing her. Her prayers, like I say, are much more powerful than mine. She is full of grace, I am not. She is in heaven with the other saints who are pleading before God. Today, may she plead for me and for you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. 
and blessed is the fruit of the home, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, wash us, cleanse us, deliver us, especially from any abuses that we've held at you. May your Son forgive us, deliver us, bless us, protect us here on earth, prosper us for his own glory, and at the end of time, we be in heaven with the Holy Trinity, with you, the Mother of God, and all the saints, to enjoy with God forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray to us and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd like to continue receiving these weekly presentations, ensure to press on the subscribe button. Thereafter, press on the notification bell, so that every time a presentation is uploaded, you get a message on your phone. See you next week. Thank you and God bless you.